Samurai, knights, gladiators, and other warriors have brandished incredible swords throughout history. Unique craftsmanship and interesting designs, here are the top 15 most legendary swords. Number 15. Admiral Lord Nelson's French Officer Sword Typically speaking, any weapon that was owned by a celebrated historical figure will fetch a high price at auction, and this sword is no exception. That's because it was owned by Admiral Lord Nelson, who is best known for leading the British Navy into a number of decisive victories during the Napoleonic Wars. And while not much is known about the blade, it seems most likely that Admiral Lord Nelson captured it from a French officer during a battle, and it's believed to have held sentimental value to him due to his reluctance to part ways with it during his life. As such, it was able to fetch a cool $541,000 at a 2002 auction, which in 2020 dollars adjusts to an even more impressive sum of $782,000. Number 14. The Kopesh as far as age goes, the Kopesh is certainly on the older side. That's because this type of sword was manufactured during the time of the ancient Egyptians, with it being in service between 3000 and 1300 BC. Now, the weapon itself is essentially a modified sickle, with the curve often being used to trap an opponent's arm or knock a shield out of the way. But perhaps most interestingly of all is that it was even regarded as a status symbol by many pharaohs, as dull rather than sharp ceremonial versions have been found in a number of royal tombs from the time period. As such, while it may be simple, the Kopesh is nonetheless still spectacular. Number 13. The Kirtana The Kirtana, which is also known as the Sword of Mercy, is a pretty disappointing weapon at first glance. After all, the end of it doesn't even have a sharp tip meaning that it would be absolutely useless in the heat of battle. And while this may make the sword look less than impressive, it is nonetheless beautifully adorned, and thus rather than be used to fight foes, it has traditionally symbolized mercy and an aversion to wrongful killings. As such, it's been used to crown king and queens ever since it was wielded by the Anglo-Saxon King Edward the Confessor from 1042 to 1066 AD, and thus it should come as no surprise that it's still one of the crown jewels of the United Kingdom to this day. Number 12. Joyeuse As far as rulers go, few come close to Charlemagne. That's because not only did he lead the Holy Roman Empire throughout much of the 700s and part of the 800s, but he also expanded it so that it covered most of Western and Central Europe. As such, his personal sword, Joyeuse, is extremely valuable. However, there are two competing blades in both Austria and France that claim to be the legendary weapon. And while different features on both make it seem like it could be the one, the truth of the matter is that due to its age, we'll likely never know for sure. Number 11. The Urumi While all the swords on this list are, well, sword-shaped, the Urumi is a little bit different. That's because the blade on this weapon is extremely flexible, and as a result, it's closer in resemblance to a whip than an actual sword. Now, its origins can be traced all the way back to the 3rd century BC, where it was first used across what is now modern-day India and Sri Lanka. The blade itself is often about 1.5 meters long, and due to the nature of the weapon, it typically has to be in continual motion in order to be effective. As a result of these requirements, it's generally the last weapon to be taught in Indian martial arts, and it is by far one of the hardest weapons to master. Regardless, once a user does get it under control, it is certainly nothing short of spectacular to watch it in action. Number 10. The Sword of St. Peter Given that St. Peter was the first pope of the Roman Catholic Church, it goes without saying that his sword is a pretty big deal. After all, it's believed that he used this sword to cut off the ear of a soldier trying to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, thus making the blade an extremely important religious icon. However, while this sword may look legitimate, chances are it's only a copy of the original. That's because it's believed that after being brought to Rome by St. Peter in the first century AD, it eventually found its way to Poland, where it was given as a gift to the Polish clergy to commemorate the nation becoming a Christian country. Yet once there, many believe that a copy was made and that the original was lost, as carbon dating of the sword proved that it was made long after St. Peter's death. However, despite this being the case, the sword was still used during the coronation ceremonies of most Polish monarchs from the 14th to the 18th centuries, and it can still be viewed today at the Ponzan Art Cathedral in Ponzan, Poland. Thus, we suggest checking both the sword and the cathedral out next time you're in the city. Number 9. The Sword of Gujian Out of all the swords on this list, few are nearly as well-preserved as the Sword of Gujian. 
That's because despite the fact that it was crafted between 771 and 403 BC, it's still in remarkable shape, as the blade still shows all the intricacies and markings that were chiseled into it when it was first made. Now, in regards to the blade itself, the body was primarily made of copper so that it would be less likely to shatter. Its edges have a lot of tin content in order to make them harder and sharper, and the surface of the blade contains sulfur in order to decrease the chance of tarnish in the patterns. It's believed that both this combination of materials and the nearly airtight wooden scabbard it was stored in allowed it to be untouched by the elements, which is very impressive given that it was found in a tomb soaked in underground water. As such, since the Chinese government excavated it from this tomb in 1965, it has been in the hands of the government, who have gone through great lengths to ensure it continues to be preserved. However, if you'd like to get a glimpse of it for yourself, it can be visited at the Hubei Provincial Museum. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Seven-Branched Sword Out of all the swords on this list, the Seven-Branched Sword is certainly one of the strangest. That's because this blade not only dates back all the way to China's Jin Dynasty in the year 369, but also has a rather peculiar design as it has three branches on either side and a pointed tip that makes it resemble a tree. Now, according to the inscription on the sword, it was, quote, manufactured with hundred times wrought iron. And if the sword is to be believed, it also, quote, has a magical power to rout the enemy. Yet while this blade may be very well crafted, the fact that it's rather delicate makes it more than likely it was never used in practice. Instead, it likely had some sort of ceremonial purpose, with further inscriptions on the sword signaling that it was given by the rulers of Korea to the King of Japan. As such, it's revered by both Korean and Japanese historians alike, and in order to keep it in pristine shape, it's now housed in the Isonokami Shrine in Tenri in Nara Prefecture, Japan. Number 7. The 18th Century Boateng Saber out of all the swords on this list, the one that's been verified to be the most expensive by far is an 18th century Boateng Saber. That's because this weapon, which was crafted during China's period of Xianglong rule between 1736 to 1795, holds the record for being the most expensive sword ever sold at auction. Because in 2008, it sold for an incredible $7.7 .7 million, which in 2020 dollars is equivalent to a whopping $9.3 million. Now, the reason why it went for such a high amount could be chalked up to its craftsmanship. After all, it has a unique S-shaped black design that is equipped with a fitted jade handle that's filled with ornamental flowers and leaves, a blade that's decorated with inlaid gold, copper, and silver, and a top-of-the-line wooden sheath to encapsulate all of it. To top this off, the sword was developed at the Royal Home Department's Palace Workshops, with it believing to have taken approximately 47 years in order to make it. Therefore, despite it not being one of the oldest swords out there, it should come as no surprise that it is a very valuable item. Number 6. The Wallace Sword If you happen to be from Scotland or are well versed in its history, then chances are that you've heard of William Wallace. That's because he was a military leader who, in the year 1297, won against the British at Stilling Bridge and allowed Scotland to temporarily be a free nation. Interestingly enough, the Wallace Sword is in fact a two-handed blade and thus comes in at a monstrous length of 163 centimeters from top to tip. And while it's currently on display at the National Monument, there are some historians that believe it shouldn't be there at all. That's because many believe that it could be a fake, as there are reports that out of the three pieces that make up the sword, two of them do not match up well. However, when you consider that there is documentation to prove its authenticity throughout the centuries, and that it shows many of the features and much of the wear and tear that would be expected of such a sword, it becomes clear that the sword is more likely to be legitimate than fraudulent. Number 5. The Sword in the Stone We've all heard of the legend of King Arthur, where he pulled the legendary sword Excalibur out of a rock to prove his divine right to the throne. Yet while this may be a fictional story, in Italy a very real rendition of this event in reverse took place. Now, the story goes that the sword belonged to Galgano Guidati, who was a knight born in the modern province of Siena, Italy in 1148. He was supposedly rather sinful and violent as a youth, but this all stopped when he began to receive visions from the Archangel Gabriel. Now, in his first vision, Galgano followed the Archangel to the hill of Monteseppe, where he met the Twelve Apostles and the Creator himself. Yet not long after, his horse forcibly brought him to Monteseppe again, where he received a second vision, in which the Archangel asked him to renounce all material possessions. 
At first, Galgano refused, saying that this would be as easy as splitting a stone with a sword. And to prove his point, he actually decided to try to do so. Yet to his shock, the stone gave way like butter, and his sword miraculously got stuck inside the stone. After this, Galgano took the hint and renounced all his titles and possessions in order to become a humble hermit, where he lived out his days on the hill in prayer and fasting until his death in 1181. It then only took a few more years for him to be declared a saint. Now, we know that you're probably skeptical. After all, for centuries, many hinted that it could be fake. Yet in 2001, an in-depth analysis was performed on the sword, and the results were incredible. That's because after extensive carbon testing, the sword's age was found to be compatible with the era, ensuring that it isn't a modern fake. And while there are still some who doubt the evidence, it can nonetheless be viewed today in Monteseppe's Hermitage, which is the building built on the hill to honor the famous saint. Number 4. Cursed Muramasas While there are plenty of incredible swords on this list, those that built by the famed Muramasa are a step above the rest. That's because Muramasa, who also went by Muramasa Senso, was known to be one of Japan's greatest swordsmiths during his life, and due to the quality of his blades, he even founded the Muramasa School to teach others how to make them. Now, his blades were famous for having some unusual features, with the most notable being the wave shape often seen on the surface of his blades, and the fish belly shape often featured on the back of them. Yet, they were also famous for supposedly being cursed, as due to Muramasa Senso having a reputation for being a little bit crazy, it was believed that the swords were hardwired to draw blood whenever they were drawn. And while stories of this fact being the case abounded for centuries after Muramasa Senso's death in either the 13th or 14th century, this all came to a head during the reign of Tokugawa Ieyasu, who reigned in Japan between 1600 and 1605. That's because after a series of suspicious incidents involving the blades, he became convinced that they were cursed so that they would lead to the deaths of those of the Tokugawa clan, which is a ruling house that he was a part of. Therefore, he had them banned throughout the empire. Now, this didn't mean that the swords didn't still find their way around. After all, the enemies of the Tokugawa actively sought out these blades, and due to these swords having a tendency to be quite expensive heirlooms, many opted to simply scratch out Muramasa Senso's name so that they would not have to hand them over to the authorities. However, despite the attempts to circumvent the rules, the results of this decree was that what was once a very popular blade became very hard to come by, as most were ultimately either melted down, disfigured, or in the case of many modern renditions, faked. Therefore, legitimate Muramasas tend to command a high price at auction. Number 3. Napoleon Bonaparte's Sword There are few generals in history that were nearly as famous as Napoleon Bonaparte as both his victories and defeats across Europe had immortalized him as one of the most intriguing figures of Europe's revolutionary period. Yet in order to get this reputation, Napoleon had to fight in a lot of battles. Yet rather than use more modern weaponry, he instead chose to stick to the custom of bringing both pistols and a sword into battle. And while he used a wide range of weapons during his campaign, this sword was perhaps one of the most significant, as he wielded it during the 1800 Battle of Marengo which allowed him to take control of northern Italy from Austria while simultaneously consolidating his power in France. It also stands apart to it being curved rather than straight, which is something that Napoleon requested of many of his swords after being impressed by the curved sabers of the Mamluks in Egypt. To top this off, the sword is also decorated with gold and has an ebony and gold handle, meaning that the materials used were top-notch as well. As such, it was passed down as a valuable heirloom in the Bonaparte family from generation to generation. However, in 2007, this ground to a halt when discord within the family caused the Bonapartes to ultimately sell the sword. However, many members of the family did not actually want the auction to take place, and thus when it ultimately did, it was an unidentified woman who ended up placing the winning bid in order to give it as a gift to her husband, who is in fact a descendant of Napoleon. However, this certainly came at a heavy cost, as she had to pay six and a half million dollars, which is the equivalent to about eight million today, in order to receive it which ultimately made it the second most expensive weapon ever sold in human history. Number 2. Masamune Swords Out of all the Japanese sword makers to have ever lived, Masamune is widely considered to be the best katana maker of all time. That's because his swords were notable for being of both extremely high quality and beauty, with it being reported that he even had the ability to implant crystals into his swords to make them appear as if they had the stars of the night sky within them. Due to this skill, Masamune was a famous teacher, 
with him even being the mentor of the aforementioned Muramasa along with nine other swordsmiths who are considered to be some of the greatest of all time. Yet due to the fact that he created his swords between the years 1288 and 1328, they are extremely rare today. However, even among the Masamunes out there, there are a few that stand out. For example, the Honjo Masamune, which was likely named after a certain General Honjo, was for centuries considered to be the most well-made and most valuable Masamune sword out there. As a result, it was deemed to be a Japanese national treasure in 1939. But when the Allies ultimately defeated Japan in World War II, it was surrendered to the Americans and given to a man by the probably misspelled name of Sergeant Coldy Bymore. Unfortunately, this ambiguity has been furthered by the fact that this name does not appear in any military records. As a result, the sword is considered to be lost to this day. However, there are some blades that have had a much better fate. For example, the famed Musashi Masamune is one of Masamune's more interesting katanas that is still around today. That's because it blends multiple different styles and time period influences into its style. Yet despite this, it's still a functional sword. Best of all, rather than it being lost, it is currently possessed by the Society for the Preservation of Japanese Art Swords. Regardless, it goes without saying that any genuine Masamune truly is unique. Number 1. The Curved Saber of St. Martin While Napoleon may beat out José de Saint Martin in terms of fame, Saint Martin is nonetheless one of the most famous generals to have ever lived. That's because he was an Argentine general who was able to lead the modern-day countries of Argentina, Peru, and Chile to independence against their Spanish overlords, and thus he is perhaps one of the most well-respected historical figures in all of South America. Now, like any good general, San Martin tended to carry a sword with him to battle, and his sword of choice was a special curved saber. The story goes that he bought the sword in London before he set off for South America, as he reportedly liked the strength that came from its curved blade. However, when San Martin died in 1850, the sword was bequeathed to Governor Juan Manuel de Rosas, who then himself passed it on until eventually was tracked down and brought back to the National Historical Museum in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1897. However, while this should have been the end of the story for the blade, this wouldn't be the case. That's because it's been stolen twice since entering the museum's hands, with it first being stolen by members of a populist group known as the Peronist Youth in 1963, and then after being recovered a few days later, stolen once again in 1965, where it was once again recovered a few days later. As a result, the museum has since then added extra protective barriers around the sword, which should ensure that it remains untouched for the foreseeable future. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular Top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.